Ooh. Hey guys, I've been offered this uh, grey market Kubota for $400, I've just got to get it out of here. The owner was pulling stumps out and trying to clear a bit of land, got himself in a bit of strife here. So he wants to get rid of it and um, he's going to get himself a bulldozer which is probably a sensible decision, more suitable for this sort of work. These things are pretty tippy and renowned for sort of going over um, if you look at them wrong. It is very similar to my little Kubota, um, mine's L1-18, so it's always good to have a spare parts machine. Apparently it ran for about 30 seconds like that before he shut it off, so hopefully no damage. It should be alright, um, it was just idling. Doesn't look like there's too much oil or f fuel lost in there, otherwise the, the water would be rainbow coloured, so hopefully it's, um, it's got all, still got all its fluids. So I'll try and pull it out of here assess it and check all the fluids and that and then try and get it running There doesn't look to be any damage. Looks like it's just sort of rested on this mud guard. And that's um that's protected it a wee bit. But um everything else looks okay. Oh the radiator's a bit low. I'll have to get some coolant for that. Oh yeah, plenty of oil there. Doesn't look like it's leaked any. I suppose that's the breather there. And um, it wasn't over far enough to, to dump the oil out, so that's good. Must have been pretty close though. Plenty of diesel. It's a three cylinder diesel. Nice little engines these. But really hard to get parts for these grey market machines. No one wants to know about them in New Zealand that I've found. There's a sight glass down here for the gearbox oil. It's on a bit of an angle, so it's not really showing. It's either full or empty. Oh, yep, that's got heaps in there. It looks nice and clean, too. He did say there was a problem with the front end, apparently it leaks quite a bit, but he couldn't find parts for it, so he's just left it as it is, and uh, just tops it up every now and then. And looking at this um, axle, it looks like it's leaking out of that seal, so it probably needs seals at the least. Um, I'll check the oil in there. I might as well dump that out, because it's probably got water in it as well because that side was fully under. Oh yep, there's water coming out of there. That wheel is looking a wee bit rusty as well and watery, so it's obviously had a problem for a wee while. So that's something I'll have to get onto, fixing that front end. brown and rusty looking. That's not great. Uh, 
Uh, yep, that's just as bad. It's uh, brown, brown sludge in there. That's not ideal. So we'll get all that out of there and um, put some new oil in there. While that's all draining out, I'll see if I can get the engine started. Oh, nothing at all. There's a light there, but nothing much happening. I think that battery might be dead. Maybe it's leaked out all its electrolyte sitting on such an angle. I bought another battery just in case, so I'll put that in. There's a bit of water in there. Okay, so it was almost full. Oh yeah, it's gonna... I wonder if it's got any oil in the cylinders from being on such an angle. What's that? It looks like a decompression lever maybe. Well, maybe I'll pull that out and um, try it in case it's got oil in the cylinders or something so it doesn't hydraulic itself. Fired. Oh, that's sounding pretty good actually. Thankfully it doesn't look like the engine has suffered any damage. Uh, it did smoke quite a bit at the start there so there might have been a bit of oil on the cylinders maybe. Um, but that's soon cleared up. It's just sort of fuel smoke now by the look of it. That's awesome. Looks like it'll be able to drive out under its own power which is a relief. I didn't really want to have to winch it out. All right all the oil is drained out of the front end so Put those bungs back in and top it up. Let's see how much it leaks. Well, it's just leaking straight out of the side. <laughs> oh well, looks like I'll have to do something about that. So I'll try and get out of here. This is probably the worst bit here. There's a wee steep bit and then it goes up a hill. So we'll see how I go.
quite a tight squeeze on there and because the ramps are so short I had to dig holes for the back wheels to get them down a bit so that it wasn't so steep and I um, ended up just crawling it on without sitting on the tractor because I didn't trust the ramps but got there in the end you can see all this oil has leaked out of the front diff so that's probably the first thing I'm going to have to do on it pull that apart and um, try and get some parts for it uh, which could be interesting hopefully it's just a standard seal or something but I have a feeling it's going to be those bearings as well because you can see how that doesn't look right that join there it's the bushings or bearings I think That's horrible. Quite possibly it has ruined this whole housing here because it's just moving a good 5-10 millimeters. It may just be um, too far gone and too expensive to replace all this so might just have to turn it into a two wheel drive maybe. What a mess, that doesn't sound healthy at all. <laughs> Look at the state of that. That's got it. Bevel gear worn out, that's not looking great. Tonight, my chances of getting a new one of those, right? She's done a bit of hard work, I'd say. You can see the pitting in that bevel gear. That sounds so bad. <laughs> There's no teeth missing by the look of it, they're just, they are a wee bit worn out though. And you can see that circlet there, it's sort of only half on, so. She's been slopping around there for a while. Ooh, that looks a bit brown, rusty. So that bearing is pretty rumbly as well, so I'll replace that. Alright, that comes out of there. Oh, what is going on there? Oh yeah, see the bearings are just totally shagged in there, top and bottom. Hopefully it's just a matter of replacing those. Ball bearings just fell out of there. Oh. 
Uh, yep, that's what's left of the bearings. The last of them just fell out of there. So I'm just using a soft hammer so I don't burr the end of the shaft or crack anything. There we go. That's got it. Oh, what a mess. Put some metal in there. So there's two bearings there, one for the bottom of this housing, and one in there. So that one there is obviously quite buggered. So I'll pop off that circle up and smash that out of there. Um, there it goes. Circle it. So I should just be able to pop that shaft off there now. Um, not too worried about um, it's quite tight, so I'll try and press that out of there. bevel gear that's quite damaged you can see it's sort of pitted because it's been so loose it's been sitting away from the other um, gear and not contacting properly so it's sort of dug in where it shouldn't be it's probably going to be fine for years like that um, especially if it doesn't do any really heavy pulling but Ideally that should be replaced. So I will have a look for another one of those, but I don't like my chances. If I can't find one of those, i will just have to go back on. Kind of looks like there's two bearing races in there. And this, it's just because the um, onion has been rubbing on the casing. It has sort of curved it and made it look like a bearing race. Yeah, that's probably what's happened. And see how the, the weight has been sitting on that bearing and pushed over the circlet, so that's going to be tricky to get out, I think. Hmm, got a job on my hands. But it looks like it is salvageable, which is a relief. I've just got to try and find the right bearings for it and seals. I'll go and have a look for a parts manual and do some investigating. So we'll leave it there for now and um, come back to it another time when I've got some parts. Thanks for watching guys. Catch you next time.